What up guys, today we got a question from Taylor who's been training jiu-jitsu for three years. He's a young fella and he's focused on jiu-jitsu competitions. That's what he wants to do and it's what he wants to do in the future as he grows with the sport. And he says that his question is about how to bridge the gap in experience to be able to compete and win against people who have way more experience than him. So he says that in some cases he'll go to a competition and again, like these people might have five to 10 years more experience than them, whether, whether it be jujitsu or in some cases wrestling. Uh, and so he's wanting to know how to bridge that gap to be able to compete against these people. So Taylor, thank you for the question, bro. So I understand where you're coming from with this question because it used to freak me out too. I remember going into a lot of MMA fights, a lot of jiu-jitsu matches, and having significantly less experience than the people that I was competing against, right? I remember once where I fought against a guy in MMA who had like a bunch of wrestling accolades, right? He, he was this whatever state champ and he wrestled in college, and then, but I was able to take him down. I remember competing as a white belt, blue belt, purple belt, all the way into black belt, really, and going against guys who had multiple times more experience than me. As a black belt, I remember talking to one guy that I competed against after our match was over, and I'd won, and I said, hey, man, like, you know, just talk to him. How long have you been training? And he had been training, he had been a black belt longer than I had been training, okay? So again, understand belts, time, all that stuff, just psh, throw it out the window when it comes to competitions. It doesn't really matter. Sure, it matters to some degree, but there's so much left out when you're talking about time. Okay, you've been training for five years. What does that five years look like, right? It could be just the, it could be the kind of training that some people do as hobbyists, right? They're people that are just casual about it. They come in, they turn their brain off, they had a long day at work. Coach, what do you want me to do? They half-ass drill, they don't really focus on it too much, and then they're just like, when is it time to roll? And then they roll and they just go through the, motion, uh, the motions, go with the flow. Nothing wrong with that. It's enjoyable, it's fun. But when it comes to training as a competitor, you have to train differently. I'll talk about that in a second. But what I want to get you to think about is again, time, belts, just throw it all out the window because we see plenty of times where many competitors are able to beat competitors who have higher belt ranks in them, um, who have more time in them, and they're able to mop the floor with them, right? Plenty of examples. I don't have to give them to you, uh, give you specific ones here. I'm sure you have plenty that you've studied. Now, going to the ideas about how to train to bridge the gap, what you're really saying is how do I get better faster? That's really what you're saying. And there's lots of ways that we could go down. If you were here in my gym, I could give you more ideas, but we're going to get specific to one that I think would be really important that most people, it's so simple, but most people don't do it. And it's because it's uncomfortable, right? Um, understand that again, when you look at a lot of times like successful people, a lot of times their success directly correlates with their ability to embrace, uh, endure, and then almost enjoy discomfort, right? I used to tell this to MMA fighters back in the day who would come into the gym. They're like, I want to be the next champion or whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool, man. Well, uh, you know, here's a schedule, right? We're going to write out the schedule here, train at these classes. You basically now have the worst paying part-time job you've ever had, <laughs> right? And they'd say, no problem, man, I'm going to be here next week. And they would be. Um, and then they would typically fall off the next week because it's really difficult. And what I would tell them is it's really easy to be the guy getting his hand raised in the ring. Very difficult to be the guy in the gym doing the training and doing the work when nobody's watching. So when it comes to training to bridge that gap, the thing that I would get you to focus on is very deliberate focused training, right? What this means is, is you don't get the luxury, if you're trying to get better, of coming into the gym and just turning your brain off. Now, if your coach directs you more intentionally, then maybe you can do that a little bit, but if not, you're gonna have to take it upon yourself. You're gonna have to walk into the gym and instantly know this is my game, these are the things that I'm doing, and this is what I'm working on. Now, why is that so important? right? Well, think about if you want to win competition matches, just ask yourself that question. What does it take to win matches? What does it take to be a good competitor? We'll ask it that way. If you watch any grappling sport, there's plenty of clues. Watch wrestling, watch judo, watch jujitsu. The best people in the world, the best competitors become synonymous with typically a set of techniques, a position, a throw, a takedown, whatever the, the sport requires, they become synonymous with those things. You know, you can go look up a judoka that you might follow and all of a sudden you'll see one throw that they've used like a thousand times against people in competitions, right? Do they know more stuff than that? Well, of course they do. But that's not what you need for competitions. It's, it's not what you need to win. You don't need a lot of knowledge. It's good to have it if you got it, but you don't necessarily need it. Think about Hodger Gracie. I always use him on the channel, right? Because he's such a good basic fundamental jiu-jitsu, but so good. 
he knows more than friggin' cross collar chokes, right? I mean, the guy's amazing. But again, he's using those in his, he was using those in his competition days because it was one of his best moves. So again, when you're thinking about that, what your job as a competitor is is not to just have this overall knowledge and just train haphazardly for years. It's to be very intensely focused on developing your competition game, the techniques that you're going to use against someone in competition, the style that you're going to use against different types of people. So when you face a wrestler, you have the ability to either take them down because you've improved your takedowns or you're going to pull guard and sweep them or attack their legs or whatever it is that you plan to do or whatever you're best with. And then if you have a guard pass, what's your best guard passing game? What's your best submission? What is your best dominant position that you're always going to try to get to, right? Look at the best competitors. They always get back to the same places because the job or the goal is, is to pull you into the area that I have more experience with that you don't. I have the whole map laid out in front of me. I know all the side roads. I know the, the different detours you got to take, and you don't know them. That gives me the advantage. So even if for some reason you've been training longer than me, I'll have this position. I'll know more about this position than you do, right? And so that's your job. That would be my encouragement to you, right? Again, is to find those positions, find those techniques, find the different moves that you plan to use in the competition, and then you go and compete, and you use them, and you find more about them, and you develop them. That's the goal, right? And again, that's how you bridge the gap, so to speak. You get very intensely focused on that. And again, you can obviously make up with, with certain amount of time and training and everything else. You're young, you can train more often, you have recovery and all that stuff. But nonetheless, you have to be very intensely focused. You do not have the luxury of being nice and comfortable and just coming in and just rolling, turning off your brain and just ro you know messing around. Every now and then can be fine, but if you're trying to get better, you have to be focused. Now, there's other things that you could do, like strength training, being really detail, uh, disciplined on your diet, getting enough sleep, all that stuff. But for now, on, I want you to leave with the idea that one, the years, the belts, all that stuff, forget about it, and then be very intensely focused and train very deliberately with an intent to get better with a certain set of techniques, positions, and things like that. So anyway, that's the idea, Taylor. Good luck to you, brother. I'll talk to you next time.